Like Juno it, rises from the grave. Yes. <laughs> she is a, a, a legend. <laughs> she is now a legend unit. That, that's <laughs> like that's like uh, with her three times now. <laughs> altered altered beast, man. When I think about that, rise from your grave. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Chad. We are back at it again with the end of another episode of Educate and Dominate, that interview series where we take some of the top names in a game and get their insights so we can bring your game to the next level. I think my intro um, speaks for itself when we're talking about this next guest, one of the most consistent top two, top one legend players out there on the global side, Scott Fetus from the Guild Swag. How are we doing today, sir? What's up? What's it looks up? Like, looks like I'm in the lead uh, for winning, you know, Sunday morning. Yeah, sun, Sunday morning lead. Yeah, we're and this is all this is all fixated. We 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 just I just boosted him real quick, guys, so he can wreck the rest of the one. <laughs> yeah, so, I think I won Saturday too. So I, I'm yeah. you know I'm I'm doing pretty well. I'm in good position for tonight. For all those that are new to the channel, welcome to the channel. Um, when I got the Educate and Dominate series on board, um, I had three people that came in really clutch for me to help me uh, blossom it into what it is today, and that was Barian. Um, Scott Fetus and Nick the Greek. They were my first three guests here. So it's really, uh, I really do appreciate you coming on board back to give people what they want, hitting up that some of that uh, AD meta talk. So. I'm excited to be here. We finally uh, got a chance to hook back up and have, uh, have another show. So I'm excited. All right. Good deal. So uh, obviously we're going to be focused on a lot of stuff with regards to the, to the arena topic, but I kind of want to give people a feel for those that haven't seen the original video. Now, for anybody new tuning in, uh, episode three of Educate and Dominate is the one that we brought Scott Fetus on board. Uh, don't worry about that echoey sound. That was a fail on my part. It's still good quality. Make sure you check it out and then, you know, come on board back to this particular episode because um, that's going to be kind of a follow-up version of that one. So um, a lot has changed, Scott, um, since you've been on board. Congratulations again on on getting so many uh, consistent legend marks. I mean, you've had quite a few number one ranks in some of the hardest uh, weeks to date. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. So first things up, um, we got a new guild tag. We got a, got a new guild tag. We have moved on to swag. Tell me a little bit about the new guild. What's your feel? Swag. I'm mixing it up a little bit. Um, you know, ultimately it started in Shoguns, and and that was my first guild ever, right? And so then I made a swap to AV, and, and after being in AV for a year, I think it was just time. Um, new crowd, learn some new things, maybe educate some new people um and and i still am really close with a lot of the av members um speak to them on a daily basis you know shout out to phil he was on your educate and dominate grant there yep. um and and you know a couple of the other folks out there dj k out there um so they're they're a great group of guys i think it's it's just important to to take you know join a new guild have multiple perspectives i've been um you know kind of working with barry quite a bit over you know, the past prior weeks. And, and, and it's, it's, it's time just to build some new relationships and build some new partnerships and see if you can learn, learn some new things. That's all. So ultimately swag was a really hungry guild. It looked like on Sundays, everybody was really engaged in, in guardian level arena. And it looks like a lot of the folks wanted to learn more about different metas. I wanted to learn more about metas. So made the swap. Um, that's really it. Cool, cool. And then uh, with regards to the Reddit community, obviously it looks like you're still contributing a lot there, putting some posts here and there or whatnot. Um, has there been any, uh, with, with respect to what we're going to be talking about today, has there any, been anything else that uh, we might have missed along the way, um, some great, great conversations either that you put out there or that maybe mm -hmm. some close friends, your theory crafts have put out there that you really uh, feel that's been insightful to the community? So for, th for those of you that don't know, I'm Mad Pugs. Uh, there's no space, so M-A-D-P-U-G-Z. If you search for me on Reddit, you'll see some of the posts I've done in the past. I mean, really, what I don't like to add a lot of just non-value spamming on Reddit. So I'll, I'll get inspired maybe like once every three to six months, and then I'll and I'll just create a Reddit post, and usually it does pretty well, um, and I, I get a lot of positive feedback. Uh, so you know, two months ago, I was I was you know sitting at a hotel room, and I was like, you know what, I'm kind of bored right now. I'm, I'm going to look at Reddit, see see what comes to mind, and I just thought of creating a post about AD meta 
and talking about what I saw to be um, a triangle of three different styles uh, that is very common in Guardian 3 Arena. Good deal. Yep. I'm excited to get into some of that. So um, before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about some of the uh, latest and greatest units you've got. The cool thing about um, uh, your your account or whatnot when it comes to, you know, getting some new things or whatnot, you don't, you don't hold back when it comes to doing some testing or whatnot. You have a lot of units, so it allows you to uh, try a, a wide variety of compositions. And if anybody knows you best, um, you know, seeing you in the arena, um, regardless of what time it is in the week, you showcase a wide variety of ADs, uh, troll mm-hmm. ADs, your standard ADs or whatnot. Now, now, despite uh, some of those that are arena-based, you do have some that are are just, you know, just for SNGs, right? Shits and giggles, just, just playing around with them and whatnot. And one of the ones that mm-hmm. kind of stuck out um, early on that we actually talked about in Episode 3, but we wanted to come back to do a follow-up vid, um, was the uh, Dark Lich, um, Grego. Mm-hmm. And so I was wondering if you can kind of fill people in. It seems like, um, I don't want to say maybe the arena better, but more so arena, rifting, um, ne- necropolitics. It seems like a lot of people now are getting into that, that Lich you know, thing. They're starting to drink that Kool-Aid. So what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, so the beauty of Lich is that he's a, he's a necro rock star just by virtue of his second skill. Uh, is randomized when there's multiple targets, but when you're when you're hitting one target, uh, all those attacks are hitting the the same same target essentially, right? So it's nice because the damage scales up really high on these dungeons that are recently released, uh, raiding and and, and necro. Um, he hits really freaking hard. I mean, with attack crit damage attack, uh, violent revenge, I can see like eight k ticks um, that that will pop up with defense break, and he hits about four. I think four maybe three, four times. Um, so the damage is very strong. Plus he has two relevant debuffs, the slow um, defense break. Uh, and his passive is just, is just awesome, right? I mean, his passive reduces 50% of damage. So irregardless of his base stats, his, his defense and, and his, his base HP, which happens to be really high, you're, you're just getting kind of the net uh, double effect for every one stat point that's invested into him uh, on the defense end. Um, which is what he actually, he can be built to be a very strong frontliner just by virtue of his passive um, and raiding, uh, assuming that you have a good cleanse strategy, right? So you're running your Garudas, maybe a Vela Jewel, maybe, you know, a Naval or, or some other cleansing unit um, when Undyne. Uh, so I think he has a lot of versatility in raids. He's very strong in Necro. If I had two of them, I'd be running two in Necro and, and you know, I think he might be able to give this triple fay comp that that Barian, you know, shows off in, in his necro runs um, a run for its money. But you know, until then, uh, I just run a solo, nice. <laughs> solo dark lich. Nice. And with regards to uh, the other liches out there, it seems like um, you know all of them kind of fall in that category of being you know really really strong. But if uh, not everybody has the opportunity to you know pull the dark lich or whatnot, if there was one out of the three elements. Um, that you feel um, is probably going to be the strongest for either the the, the rifting or, or or the necrop uh, necropolis. Um, mm-hmm. What would you feel would it be that one? Uh, you know, for me, I, I'm kind of indifferent when it comes to the wind or water one. But okay. it, ultimately, I think it's between the two. Uh, the other the other liches do not have the same kit. The the AOE defense break is you know they all have the auto attack slow. But uh, the the second skill is what what makes lich shine in in these single target dungeons. Yeah. Yeah, I love I love that water one. I can't get enough of that. And then I noticed that uh, um, it had it, it also had that reduction. I guess whatever what the damage was. And so I thought it'd be a good candidate for the rifting too. So, but mm-hmm. yeah, wind wind's one of the strong one too. I ain't gonna lie. So, mm-hmm. um, let me see here. So yeah, moving on. Let's see. We got ourselves another light and dark unit here. Um, a really interesting kit to say the least. Here we got ourselves a Marna. The I don't think is that the the Anubis. Is that what it is? Light and dark. Yeah. Yep. It is. I was I was really excited because I thought for a minute that it was a Nat Five, and then I realized it wasn't. <laughs> that the dark, <laughs> fail, fail. <laughs> the dark Anubis is actually the Nat Five version, but uh, you know he's a cool looking unit, right? He looks pretty badass. Yeah, he does. Um, he which does. is why I had to build him, just because he, he looks he looks like a boss. But uh, as you can see, the the base speed I have on him right now is is pretty low, and I also didn't stack much crit on him for the reason of I use him in Necro, so he will get crit against the dark units, so he'll kind of hit that fifty percent threshold. He's ruined a uh, triple attack, and and the reason why is if, if you kind of scroll through his kit, you can see that uh he is passive. Every time he takes a turn, he heals the lowest target uh, party member um, based on your your attack power. So 
it's it's nice. I mean, if you violent proxies healing twice, and and on top of it, if one of your units dies, it gets rezzed. Um, but then it also means it disables the healing and the passive. His first two skills are still relevant. His his uh, first skill, I think, has the healing debuff, um, and his yeah, and his second skill has branding effect. Um, so I think there's some opportunity to use him in raiding. I happen to have some some better raid units, but. Healing debuff and branding debuff on, on a unit is not easy to get, especially one that heals your team. Um, and, and, you know, in raids, you run a lot of attack power uh, buffing, and same with Necro, uh, which just makes this heal even stronger. So when I want to run a really safe uh, Necro comp um, and, and kind of just guarantee that it's going to be high success, then I'll throw him in and swap out one of my uh, my Rands, my Dark Rook Sashos. Gotcha. Very cool. And uh, probably uh, the latest light and dark nap five would that have to be in the gong? <laughs> you pronounced that? Is that That's the one? That's cracker. You... <laughs> yeah, yeah. But Cra um, but I guess yeah. I'm jumping ahead. So yeah. So this guy the gong. Oh boy. So it's interesting. This is an interesting unit because he has really good base stats. It's nice that he awakens into resistance. Um, I was hoping it was it would be the dark pioneer, okay? But instead, right. I got the light one. It's all right. So he, he has a his third skill is is kind of what makes him different than than a lot of the other uh, pioneers, and and really not just because it's his ultimate, and obviously a lot of the characters have unique ultimates, but because it's an AOE soul protection. Uh, and and what happens with that skill, and I've done some testing with it, is let's say someone Lucian's your whole team, um, and as long you know, as long as the buff is up, it's a three turn buff, uh, your team will revive like Perna and it'll revive at the attack age that they died at. Okay. Gotcha. So, so what's nice is if you were to build him like violent nemesis, uh, and you know, someone's trying to Lucian you, um, you can bounce back and just res your team. They don't get res at too high of HP, but that's because they maintain their, their attack age. Um, so, you know, he's fun to play around with. His second skill does like some, you know, does some damage is similar to, to Wusa's second skill. I'm I'm waiting to play around with this unit until I have enough Devilmon. So you'll see, um, I, I've, I've used him a little bit in Guild Wars, um, but he's kind of shelved right now until until I have some Devilmon to invest in him. He needs all those, uh, that, that cool time reduction. Gotcha. And then before I get into the next one, um, you've always made a really, really good uh, valid point when it comes to um, testing the variety of units and, and, and talking about the Devamon in general, being able to utilize them. So I was wondering mm -hmm. if you can tell your, uh, the community about your thought process when it comes to um, testing the unit you know, at that level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for me, you really do not know a unit's potential until it has a Devilmon investment, right? So you kind of, you need, you, you need to take a guess and you, you need to decide if you have multiple competing units. Uh, you know, is this going to be worth the Devilmon investment? Um, or does this unit show some potential? Um, and, and just try to understand the kit to see, uh, you know, if there's minus uh, one cooldown you know, effects, uh, that's powerful effect, right? You need that in order to see how an AI is going to behave on in arena uh, specifically, but also in dungeons. So for me, Kraka um, was is someone that I got after Light Pioneer, and really I just got so lucky with LD scrolls. I was I was pretty pumped about it. <laughs> Kraka was a unit that I wanted. Um, you know, out of LD options, there's not too many good Light and Dark Nap fives. All right, right let's be right. frank. So getting Kraka for me was was a was was exciting just because I think she's she's one of the better ones. Um, it's just, you know, so I have her ruined right now for world boss, just like I had light pioneer ruined for world boss. Um, she's in, she's in the Devilmon uh, construction phase. So if you can, if you look at her skills, I've been investing in her, um, having a two turn AOE defense break shatter as well as a really powerful revive because it, uh, it allows the, the revive target to have its full cooldowns. I'm thinking that it would be pretty good in, in, in a stall comp right now. Originally I was thinking that. Um, I might use her in something more mid-range, um, probably build her hybrid, just enough HP to survive a Lucian Blast and, and then have Praha heal or another healer heal and then uh, just, just kind of win by attrition. Um, so, you know, turn advantage. Mm -hmm. uh, but we'll see. I mean, we'll find out once I give her some more double one. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing that too, especially, um, you know, just, just to kind of shed the, the light on all the things. You know, definitely 
take a look at some of these units that people kind of threw off the side. Lord knows that Ethna, as well as another multitude of um, you know Nat fives out there, have gotten the the you know the, kind of the shaft when it comes to you know people thinking that it does good or whatnot. But um, like you stated with regards to the Devil Mon, until you invest it, it's going to be strong. And then of course, depending on what what their skill set is, um, could be even more. I think I think uh, ridiculously strong. I think uh, the Lich falls into this one. Cracker falls into this one. Where oh yeah, they're, they're, they're game. Sick. Yeah, there, there, there are different units with double mine. Absolutely. Yeah, look at, I mean, look at this here, right here, guys. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, an AOE defense break, sixty percent chance when you have it every other turn. I mean, that's, you know, when you max it out, that's that's a game changer right there. I mean, obviously, it's it's completely different when you have you know twice the 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 cooldown time. So, mm -hmm. um, and then last but not least, there. What's your thoughts on this one here? We all have seen this in the recent HOH. There, smacking our <laughs> light <laughs> light units out there. God, I hate this thing. I know I hear everybody complaining about this unit in, in the HOH. So this is a recent summon for me. Um, I ruined her, you know, ultimately I'd probably give her violent revenge. Uh, but what, what's nice about this unit is if you don't have, uh, I mean, it's just a, it's a necro rock star, right? As, as some people are using the, the fire elven archer. Um, if you summon a, a, a dark one, it's a pure upgrade. Obviously, it's it's a it's a nat four though versus a nat three, so it's a little bit tougher to get. My my only issue with this unit ultimately is you, you would think it would do a lot of damage, and, and the damage is pretty weak sauce, including on the revenge, the the third skill. Um, and 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 so that's that's my only criticism I think with the unit is that I, I wish it would output some more damage. So I personally do not use a necro. I think I have there's some better options. Um, and, and, you know, I think in terms of viability, probably raiding and necro are, are the only two areas for this unit. The base stats, the HP is way too low. Defense is way too low to use in arena. Not enough burst damage to use in arena. Not enough, uh, you know, even on a stall comp, it's just not CCing. And it, it, it's, it's just, it adds no value in arena. However, it is, it's fairly exciting for necro. Um, it has a nice slow as well, which is, which is good because it's tough to get um, lane slow on, on the boss. Um, so it's, it's an alternative to just kind of running Hua. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's nice. I, I, I ain't going to lie. As, as much as uh, people hate it right now, I, I wouldn't mind pulling one too just to kind of test it out. I haven't had the opportunity to pull any really decent light and dark uh, units with the exception of Corona, but then again, Corona is kind of a, <laughs> you know, yeah. kind of situational, so it's, it kind of sucks, but, um, yeah, definitely, definitely some good things here. Let me see. Um, I wanted to go ahead and get right into that arena defense, but is there any other unit that you could think out there that you have that you've been really playing around with and wanted to kind of talk about, give you the opportunity to shine on it? Uh, Juno. Ah, yes. I was hoping you say Juno. You see how I kind of stopped right in front of Juno? I was hoping that because so we, we talked about that last time, right? And so, so many people oh my are God. like, oh, my God. Like, I mean, I know you tried it so many different times, so many combinations, and haven't been able to, you know, haven't really been able to, like, make it work right now. But I feel like... Juno rises from the grave. Yes! <laughs> she is a, a, a legend. Dude, <laughs> she is now a legend unit. That, that's <laughs> like... That's like uh, with her. Three times now. <laughs> altered, altered beast, man. When I think about that, rise from your grave. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm. So I have a, a very successful Sunday defense. Okay, and the one that I use on Sunday is it's Vanessa, Camilla, Chasun, and Juno. All right. And for the longest time, I was like, can I just get a Proha? I want Proha. Give me Proha. And you know, as if I haven't gotten everything else I wanted. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just being, you know. First world problems, right? Like I need some Tiana. <laughs> now I need Praha. I wasn't gonna say anything, <laughs> so, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so ultimately, Juno, Juno, Juno got a much better in my eyes with the release of grindstones. Okay. Boom, yep. Um. And and if you can see them, I mean, I beefed mine up pretty hard. So, what what I like about Juno right now is what what some people are doing on AO is they're going with the Sierra Bomb strategy paired up with Tiana. Um, so the really greedy folks will do Galleon AoE as well as applying a bomb. Um, so what I hope to do is interrupt and heal, okay? Um, but also, I think just having the Galleon debuff, um, even Tyrone, if there's a free stun that lands on her, she'll, she'll give you the heal, okay? Um, Having an AOE dispel that's fire is really strong against Tiana right now. Mm -hmm. um, it's 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 just 
the fact so Chiwu is awesome and Chiwu is is a comparable unit. The where I think Juno excels if you have a unit like Vanessa to pair up with her or another speed leader. Um, and maybe you don't have Chiwu. Um, it, it's she has a 50 50 chance of using her second skill. Chiwu will use first, second, or third, right? right? So, so there's a third of a chance that it'll it'll use its its dispel. So it reduces some RNG kind of in, in needing that dispel. She she works a lot better in like bruiser tank type comps. Um, Chiwu is more of like a speed speed mid range type unit. Um, so, you know, I gave her some love. I made her pretty fast. She's tanky as hell. Um, and, and I'm seeing a huge payout in investing, uh, grindstones and enchants in her. So I think the, the best build for her right now is, is definitely nemesis so that when someone Lucian's you, she can, you know, to spare proc, do something. And, yep. uh, and, and ultimately it's, it's a good fire dispeller that, that gives us wind dependent people like Teshar or Sierra, um, a tough time. Mm-hmm. Yep, and, and and one thing to note too, guys, if you guys are checking in, and he, when, when he says invest, he's he's fully investing. He's not just considering percentage-based grindstones or, or flat speed subsets, but he's considering the the flat HP and the flat defense mm. um, that you guys see right here. I mean, it's definitely if you're really trying to to beef your unit, you're 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 considering everything, not just the particular you know uh, you know regular percentage-based ones. And Juno Juno's a lot different than Praha. So I'm. I'm I'm much happier with my Juno runes than I am my Praha runes. And, and the reason why is Juno doesn't need resistance. Um, really, you just need to focus on accuracy and defense, sub, speed, HP. Uh, so it's it's nice to kind of build her, whereas I feel like Praha is, is even is really intense in terms of all the different stats she needs and how you want to use her. Um, overall, I mean, I still think Praha is a better unit. But I got to say my comfort zone is with Juno right now and the success that I've had on defense. Um Especially, I mean, just last week I hit 40% um, AD win rate in last hour with Juno, which is which is really tough to do now, I think, to sit at that 40% marker. Um, and, and mostly due to the the grindstones I invested in her. So just go for high defense subs, high HP, high speed um, when, you're, when you're building your Juno. Good deal. Thank you for that insight. All right, let's move into that to that big topic of today. We got ourselves the arena defense meta. Um, you know, like like we said, for anybody who's been new to the game, new to the channel, Scott Phoenix has been playing this game since the beginning. Has been able to showcase um, the high end arena for quite some time, showcasing a wide variety of stuff. And so now we have the opportunity to get the ish <laughs> as you would say on what's on what's going on in the game today so uh first and foremost uh you know with regards to your um arena defense build you kind of basically categorize them into three different uh you know uh, topics so to speak so can you talk a little bit about those three and, sure. and, and what you feel on that so the post i made is on reddit it's called ad meta the triangle question mark scat fetus is in the title again it's by mad pugs if you guys want to look it up yourselves, you can see everyone's comments and, and throughout the post of, you know, giving advice and on specific questions. I try to stay away from account specific stuff just because you can get bogged down. And, and for, for someone, for the person you're, you're giving advice to, it's interesting, but maybe, you know, for, the, for all the other people commenting, it's not. But anyway, so, all right. So ultimately I made an observation uh, of Guardian 3 Arena and saw three types of defense. Um, and, and really, these three types of defense are, are what show G3 success. So ultimately, I, I wanted to describe each of the three, okay? And then people can use this as a framework to try to fit their units into these three categories um, as they progress in the game. Uh, and I think it's a more successful way or template to build a defense. And then you can kind of focus on the nuances yourself and kind of what you're seeing, i.e. like timing. Which unit do I want to go first? How tanky do I want to make this unit? What, do I, what runes do I want to put on X unit, right? So, so the, the framework I built or, you know, observed is first is speed team. Second is mid-range teams. And third is the bruiser tank, okay? Um, so I can, I can go through and describe each one. So first, speed teams. This is, this is your standard... You know, speed leader, Bernard, possibly fire vamp pollution, um, or maybe you want to do, you know, Tyrone, Bernard, slot two speed, two Lucians, or Xeros, 
uh, to gauge buffers with the Xeros. Ultimately, the goal of a speed team is to kill two units on turn one. All right, so you want to kill two units on their AO with your first attack. Um, and, and that part is critical, right? So that means that you're, you, you need to do maybe like 20 to 30k damage um, AOE if you're using one AOE -er in order to achieve that. Um, and generally speaking, if you can kill two units um, on the opponent's AO, then you'll probably win. Um, for mid-range, uh, this is this is your utility kit units, right? So this is like your Chiwus, your Prahas. Um, this is this is a category where you float between. You, you want to be a speedy team, so you, you want to have a speedy team. So either Chiwu lead, Vanessa leader, maybe even you know whatever leader you want to use. I, you know, I think that maybe Tyrone in some cases with paired up with some tanky units. Um, your goal first is is to AOE dispel. And then your second goal is to is to CC. So turn one, you want to AOE dispel. You want to CC probably Veramos stun or Xeros AOE reset. Um, in this build, Xeros would be all tank, okay? Um, would take a turn immediately after your dispeller. Veramos um, would be you know, hopefully built with Violent Nemesis would, would also take a turn immediately after your Dispeller. And, and really, you just want to win by kind of stalling the match out, CCing a bunch, um, doing a lot of micro damage, maybe dots. Um, and, and, uh, and really, maybe the towers help you secure the win. Um, but the third is, is the Bruiser Tank Metal, which is this is your... I'm going to stack as much HP and defense in my units as possible. Hopefully stall the other team out. Maybe the, the laser towers kill uh, their AO because their AO is squishy. Um, or maybe I have like a Darian or Camilla that can do enough damage where I can secure a win, um, you know, while surviving the onslaught of like a Tiana or, or speed Lucian comp. So there's pros and cons to each one. And, you know, Charles, you want me to just jump in here? Yeah, yeah. Good. Okay, so for speed teams, uh, you're scary, right? Because you're like, oh, am I gonna? Am I faster than them? Am I not faster than them? Do I if I, if I run like a slow Tiana, am I gonna get killed? If I run a slow, you know, Bruiser comp, maybe they do just enough damage to kill me. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty when you attack a speed team, so people may be deterred from from attacking this. Um, it because maybe they don't have a lot of tanky AO options, so they 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 got their you know. They're, they're full YOLO, Speed Lucian team, and that's it. And, and maybe they're scared of, of getting outsped by Bernard. Um, the con is anybody that's that's climbed through Bruisering, anybody that has a Camilla, I mean, really, you can probably solo these teams with just one Camilla. Um, <laughs> yeah. and, and, it, and even a Dark Lich is another uh, perfect example of where you can bring it in. So Speed teams die to, like, tanky units, right? Beast Monks even, like a Kumar will handle uh, a Lucian probably by itself. Um so, so there's a, it's high risk, high return, um, mid range, you know, the, the pro is you don't have a bad matchup. And then, you know, I kind of joke and say the con is you don't have a good matchup either. Um, really your, your goal in mid range is just try to be strong, uh, against everyone. Uh, you, again, you're running really high, like Swiss army knife units, toolkit units, like Orion, um, Praha, you know, Praha heals and dispels in the same unit, Orion, gauge buffs, dispels, defense breaks, all in the same unit. You want to utilize every, you know, one of, one. you have four slots, you want to utilize as many skills as possible in, in, those, in those builds, um, which is why it's, it's more like unit dependent um, than some of the other builds. So that's the other con is that you probably need some good nat fives to run a mid-range build, um, but, you know, at least you won't have a bad matchup. The Bruiser Tank, this is probably the most prevalent now. At the time I wrote this post, mid-range is the most popular in G3. Right now, we're switching to Bruiser Tank. Um, you know, mostly due to raiding and grindstones, everyone is stacking a, a, a lot of HP, a lot of defense faster um, and, and at higher scaling than you can stack on your attack units, okay? So, so ultimately, raiding just kind of gave this tanky strategy a buff indirectly, um, and, and you see a resurgence of it in, in last hour, at least on global. And I, and I heard a, a little bit about it on Asia too, is that you get a lot of the, uh, the arena, the arena crap, right? Rena's back. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> as a unit like Rena that can scale really hard off its passive or like Camilla, um, 
it, it does well. It does well when you can when you can throw extra stats at at it, and uh, it makes it tougher for AOs to clear it quickly. Um, so a lot of new players that haven't um, been in the game very long uh, that have fast AOs, they're really starting to make a breakthrough. So Legend Legend Arena right now, it's it's a total toss up, right? No one's dominant. Um, I've been fortunate enough to get Legend, you know, probably fifteen plus times. But what's it right now in this meta? It's it's anyone's game. It, it, it's it's truly what I see people doing with these bruiser comps or these tanky comps is. They'll, they'll really kind of just sneak by the, and they'll climb arena really fast. And then they'll just throw like, you know, arena and a tanky Camilla on defense paired up with a Praha or Juno or something like that. And, and, and just stall people out so they don't lose points. Um, and they continue to pursue a very aggressive AO. So um, that strategy, you know, I think it works once and it maybe works twice. Um, but ultimately I think once people get back into the mojo of fighting arena, <laughs> or fighting a tanky Camilla, you can you can start to kind of curb it, and then and you'll see the meta probably swing back to mid range. Good deal. And with regards to the meta, you know, one of the things that you kind of left, uh, you know, as a grand finale to your post is is understanding the concept that that the, the Chloe's, the Theos, and you know, uh, sort of is not. I saw Childish's defense. Yeah. <laughs> I, I saw Theo. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so this this one falls into in, into my category. Uh, this is not G three quality, people. You heard it here first from Scafita. So, uh, you know, your your comment on that was 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 really really strong. And of course, you know, some I think some people that fall into this category just don't eat, like you say have either um, poor runing or or just don't have the wide variety of units to make that that quality synergy. So, um, is there any other units that you feel in that Theo Chloe kind of range that that doesn't fall into that thing that people you still see use today? Hmm. No, for me, no. I think I think if you're running Chloe in your defense um, in Guardian three, well, you're not in Guardian three if you have Chloe in your defense, and you're and you're not in Guardian three if you have Theo in your defense. At least in the last hour, maybe you are Monday through Friday. Right. Ultimately, these two units just don't do enough. And in in terms of other units that people use on defense, I think those two are probably the most interesting because they're so commonly dubbed as arena units. Um, now, don't get me wrong. Chloe is a is a good AO unit. Maybe you want to protect your Lucians. You want to run a slow Lucian team and and um, you know have them try to maybe they have a Vanessa and you want to you want a Chloe shield. They they take their turn first and then you just double Lucian them afterwards. Um, I, that's cool. I get it. It's it's it still has its purposes and it also has its purposes in Guild Wars and Theo Mars is S tier in Guild Wars. Okay, so just to be clear, these units have their roles in the game and they have their roles in Arena. However, you will not see any person that has gotten Legend in the last three months that has ever had Theo Mars or or Chloe on their defense. Okay, um, do I need to go? Do you want me to go into why or, or whatever, you, whatever you want to do? So, I mean, you, all right. Yeah. <laughs> so so Chloe ultimately um, everyone's running Dispel, right? Or or they're simply outspeeding you with their slot two speed Lucian teams. Um, so. AoE Dispel means that Chloe has no other purpose. Uh, her heal is really minor. It doesn't do enough. Her third skill is on a long cooldown. So once once her, her I call it a condom, once her condom is removed, <laughs> then it's fair game. The yeah. in, in Theo Mars is huge single target burst damage, okay, and survives the onslaught of the first attack um, of a turn one, all right? However... In this meta, having such a squishy unit that can be heavily CC'd and kind of just owned by Bernard, and Bernard being the most common AO unit in the game, probably next to Lucian, I, it's it's just it's just not a good choice. Um, and ultimately, I think his AI actually hurts him more than it helps him in regular arena because you if you have a water unit on defense, you want it to attack fire units. You right, know, like, right. You don't want it to hit the Bernard, right? I mean, that's, <laughs> right. that's silly. You, you want it to, to attack um, the Xeros. And, and that's why Camilla is strong in defense is that it attacks the Xeros and, and Xeros is a common G3 unit on AO. Um, so, so what, whatever you're fantasizing in your head, when you put a Theo Mars in defense, I know what you're thinking is, well, it's going to violent proc. It's going to just kill two units. It's going to, you know, it, it, it's not happening. It's not happening 90% of the time. Maybe you have a 1% example where your Theo Mars has cleared somebody four V one. You got really lucky, but this is not, you know, building a defense for the 1% chance that it works is not G3 quality. 
Good deal. Sounds good. And so, um, with regards to that, uh, that particular topic, uh, you know, we we're talking about the variety of, uh, of of different comps and whatnot. As you stated, the Bruiser and Tanking kind of meta is coming. You know, kind of coming back with that. Um, you know, mm-hmm. one of the things that people kind of, um, you know, put to the sideline because they really didn't find it um, real, real strong in the meta today. Um, and, and still, I believe, I, I, obviously you're going to give us your opinion here, but I still don't see a lot of it today, but hopefully you can you can elaborate on this. What is your current thoughts on the uh, Destroy Rune and how it may fit into the meta today with regards to the changes? Oh, boy. <laughs> Hit him with Destroy it. <laughs> Destroy <laughs> I don't, oh man, I don't know. I don't think they have a purpose yet. Yeah. They still don't. And and here's where I want to see destroy runes. I actually want to see destroy runes on AD. I want to see. I want to put destroy on like my Orion or Chesun or Juno, and I want to see it like <laughs> I, I want to see it uh, be like a, a secondary way to to do damage or just to reduce a target's health with your support units. Unfortunately, destroy runes scale off attack damage right now. So you mm-hmm. can't even really put it on support units. Um, I've seen it used in, in Guild Wars on a Beast Monk, which is kind of interesting because the, the Beast Monk survived long enough and took a lot of turns where I was getting concerned. Uh, but, you know, as the, as the Bruiser meta strengthens, destroy runes... It doesn't do much because you're still stuck in this battle of of taking 40 turns to kill something, right? So it's it, it doesn't help solve the issue that that tanky teams pose because you still have to attack them, you know, five six turns before you can reduce their max HP, anyways. And so if you're gonna bruiser uh, somebody out, then you're probably gonna win anyways. I mean, it's 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 your AI versus a computer's, I mean, it's, it's your intelligence versus a computer's AI. Um, so if you're bruisering somebody, you're going to win most of the time. You, so in, in really the only time you would use destroy runes is on a target that can survive or on a unit that can survive multiple lasers by the towers and, and, and not on Lucian really, because Lucian, hopefully you're killing them on turn one. So I'm not, I'm not too excited about destroy runes. Um, I don't think they're really helping right now, but maybe if they get a buff, um, they'll become a factor. So save your stones, right? Yep. Save your grindstones. Save your grindstones. Save those. Yeah, dude. How many? How many? Okay, just take a wild guess. How many grindstones do you think you have, like hero and legend grindstones of uh, of destroy runes right now? I know I got like fifteen to twenty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's I ridiculous. definitely have fifteen to twenty. They they seem to drop a lot. It's crazy. It's crazy. And so, um, I guess probably one of my next questions is, you know, I I, I was looking over your post. Um, uh, just to see what kind of things that the people posted, and, and you had a really good conversation with a gentleman um, that was talking about, um, you know, wh- where where do you draw the line with regards to real runes and not real runes? And and the one thing that a lot of people don't realize that, but they they catch your, you know, they're catching a video now, is that you've been able to win the the legendary rank um, with with a team that allowed you to play with real runes on the arena defense, as well as a team that didn't have it. You know, where you kind of stacked the resistance. So I was kind of seeing if you could talk about the pros and cons with regards to the compositions and mm-hmm. and the, and the stacking resistance when it comes to using you know those lower cooldown units um that are tanky or whatnot Mm -hmm. all right well first first i want to clarify in terms of the three categories that i have for speed team mid-range and bruiser um the way i want you guys to think about this when you're looking at the post is if you have a tanky unit that's mixed with the mid-range unit on your defense it's gonna fail it's not g3 quality if you have a speed unit that's mixed with a mid-range um might you might be able to get away with it but Ultimately, the way to look at these three categories is these are templates, build and kind of fill it and plug and play your units into these templates because this is, a, I mean, it's, you know, I say template, it's really just an observation of what's successful in G3. So I just want to jump back and, and make that statement. So, for example, you wouldn't pair a Lucian up with a Camilla on defense. That's really crazy. It's silly. But I exaggerate the point um, in order, you know, to make it clear to the viewers when you're looking at this post or when you're trying to understand the categories, if you're mixing a tanky unit with a mid-range unit, just understand that it may not synergize well, okay? Um, and, and there's exceptions to every rule, right? Like Praha can be tanky, it could be mid-range, um, Gino can be both, um, but a lot of other units like like Bernard in a super tanky comp, probably probably not the best thing, right? So, so anyways, um, but back to your question in terms of will runes, all right, so prior to getting Tiana, I'm going to talk about AO first. Cool, okay, cool. so I think will runes are critical on AO. 
they're, they're very helpful on AO it, when you're when you're trying to speed clear. Um, four man will ruin teams. So if you if you look at my Xeros and my Poseidon, which are my two favorite AO units, um, they they have will runes. If if you look at the way I ruined them, you're probably like, why does why do his units hit like a bag of dicks? Like why aren't they <laughs> why why aren't they doing as much damage? The reason why is is because I mean I only have so many freaking will runes, right? And I have to ruin four AO units with will. But uh, I sacrifice, you know, some of my best runes um, to, to ruin them with will. Um, and, and what it does is eliminates the need for you to run like Chloe and AO. So the people I'm speaking to right now is if you run Chloe and AO to protect your units, just put four man will on your team. Um, and if you have to even build them semi tanky and then run a dispeller instead of uh, Chloe. And you don't need Tiana. You could use... Um, you know, a nat five alternative is any of the dispellers, any of the oracles, you know, Juno, Praha, you could use a uh, Triton. Any of the non nat five versions are, um, you can use the, the wind brownie. You could also use, um, in some cases you can use Orion if their whole team is not, if they're not running Chloe, but also you could use, uh, I'm drawing a blank. Soha. Soha is kind of nice because yep. she does a lot of damage. Uh, and, and it's hard to find a uh, high damaging water units on AO. Um, so, so anyways, so, so the basic template that I was using on AO that I was able to achieve legend rank with was, it was very simple, Dispel, AoE Damager, AoE Damager, Galleon. So um, the key is four-man will runes. And if you're really slow, then you may have to go hybrid builds. Maybe you go HP, crit damage, attack, or maybe you go speed, crit damage, attack um, with really high HP and defense subs. That's another way because ultimately you just want to survive the first blast from Theomars. Um, and if you violent procs 50 times, they'll violent procs 50 times. It doesn't really matter because you have a second AoE. -er. That's why you have the two AoE. -ers. The hardest, uh, the what you'll struggle most against is like the teams that run Dispel on their defense. Uh, but you can either avoid those comps or you can just roll the dice because ultimately Praha and Juno have a 50 50 50 percent chance to fail. Chiwu has even a higher chance to fail. So, um, when I was running that comp, I would just face roll into Praha and Junos. I don't care. I mean, I just... <laughs> mo YOLO, most YOLO. Of the, most of the time, I was able to survive it anyways, or someone's timing was off, and I was capitalizing on their timing discrepancy. Um, so you don't need Tiana. Tiana's not critical. The unit that's critical is Galleon, for me. If, if, I, for, if RNG occurs and I lose my Galleon, I lose the AO. So I tend to build Galleon really tanky um, because... He he does a he he gives your team so much DPS with defense break and attack power buff that you you get a little greedy then if you want to build your galleon with a lot of damage as well. Okay, yeah. um, so anyways, now on defense, will runes were really strong for like five minutes on defense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The issue is is every yellow tard in the world has Tiana or a dispeller. Okay. And, and so we, we've all been so used to fighting Chloe's for so long that we, we have answers to Will Runes on defense. Uh, so I think if what, what requires a more difficult ruining is, in, but we, it's okay now because we have, we have raids, right? But it's to stack resistance if you're, if you're worried about um, bombs, if you're worried about getting frozen, whatever. You know, I, I think it, it may make sense to put one unit on Will Runes, something that's really critical. So when I run my Juno um, Chassoon comp, I actually have Chassoon on Will Runes, and that's because I have her at 40k HP with plus 70 speed. So I have a, I'm taking a gamble that she's going to survive most turn ones, okay? Um and, and then I'm hoping that she'll, she'll be fast enough to take a turn immediately after and heal. But the reason why I had her on Will Runes is what I was noticing is that... Uh, when people would attack me, they would Tyrone freeze Chassoon and then Chassoon on Nemesis, um, even with their high resistance, wouldn't have a chance to, to heal. Um, so versus like four will runes on defense, I think you might want to pick a strategic unit. Um, Juno, I don't have on will runes, so um, I have her on Nemesis. So maybe you have one will rune unit and one Nemesis uh, rune unit. So Chassoon on will runes means that Xeros probably won't reset her. Um, hopefully if, unless they're running a dispeller, um, and then Juno and Nemesis will answer kind of like, you know, maybe the Lucian burst damage and, and will kind of help save me with an AOE cool. by stunning them or something. So, 
I think I think will runes are they're really strong um, on key units, but but for the most part, with the prevalence of dispel on AO, they've they've lost a lot of steam. Right, right. That's crazy. I was I was still thinking about. Uh, I want to say I don't even know when when the will runes came out, but right right when will runes got brought out and or guild wars started coming in. We used to joke about on the uh, on the Skype calls or whatnot about seeing seeing some of these Guild War teams or any defense team was like, you know, quadruple will or triple will or whatnot. And now it's you see it time and time and again. People mixing it up with that is crazy. Yeah. So uh, I think I mean Nemesis takes the cake is probably the best set of most units. Um, but in terms of Guild Wars, I mean Will is is brutal. Will is pretty awesome. So I think in Guild Wars, it's, it's a lot stronger than it is in Arena right now, just the way that the meta was, is, is heading. Gotcha. And uh, my next question, I guess I'd have to go from shifting over from real runes to Nemesis runes. Um, you know, when I think about AO and AD and, and the topic of using a variety of these teams that you showcase here, one of the things that I, th- I think that people seem to still misunderstand is, you know, the, the benefits of what Nemesis runes can do for you. But it seems to be that, um, and I've seen videos that have that have shown the positive and the negative, but it seems to be that sometimes um, I, I've seen people with the arena videos or whatnot where they've done the AOs and they've, they've, you've watched everyone push their, their, their attack bars up, um, but their AO still goes versus sometimes, you know, the nemesis gets pushed up from a, like a Lucian or whatnot, and then, you know, their, their Chasun heals or their Veramos, you know, does their AOE stun. So um, mm-hmm. have, you no, have you noticed anything with regards to the nemesis runes? Why or why not is it seems like sometimes your Chasun or Veramos cuts in front to stop uh, the other opponent and sometimes it doesn't? Or is it, do you think it's a matter of like the speed sinking or whatnot the other team? What do you think? Well, this is like, I think there's, there's two things that are happening. One is there's this really random thing that's happening with Gage where... I mean, I, I've attacked somebody, and their Bernard has not outsped my Orion, and then there are other times where it has outsped my Orion. Yeah. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? Like, nothing has changed, right? I don't know what's going on with that, okay? Mm-hmm. But Bomber's even talked about that quite a bit on his stream, and it's like, it's a huge mystery. Like, we, we've even checked the runes and checked speed, and in all cases, your unit's faster, but for whatever reason, the game, like, throws the defense a bone, and it actually allows them to outspeed you. No idea why, why that's <laughs> happening. Don't try to figure it out. It's probably going to happen because you, you're winning too many AOs and the game is like, nah, we got to nerf them. So <laughs> just yeah. take your loss and just know that it won't happen every time. But, uh, but in terms of um, Nemesis, uh, the key with Nemesis is you still need to stack a lot of speed right, or else right. you, you won't interrupt. So with the Vanessa leader, I try to hit – plus 60, plus 70 speed and subs on my nemesis unit to make sure that I can interrupt. Um, I just watched Burke the other day attack me with my Praha, who has like plus 100 speed, um, and his Lucians were so fast that my Praha didn't interrupt. There's one time it did, and then there's one time it didn't. So I think it's 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 just ultimately it's it's how speed-tuned your enemy's AO is. Which, which is, I think is more of a takeaway for you guys on AO to, if you have, if you're running double Lucian slot two speed, try to keep them the same speed or one speed apart. Um, and then you can avoid some of the nemesis procs. Uh, but, you know, and, and for, for an AD, you just want to stack as much speed as possible without sacrificing too much HP on your nemesis unit. So if, if you have a feeling and you watch somebody attack your defense, um, which I recommend doing, um, and you're not getting enough nemesis procs, uh, you need to increase your speed. And, and you need to find kind of that right zone where you'll nemesis proc most of the time against people's AOs and, and kind of find that sweet spot. Uh, and that's just play testing. And that's, and, and, I mean, that's, that's even Eldritch and I, um, he was taking screenshots and sending them to me. He, he goes, here's what your defense looks like after turn one of being Lucian. And then I'll notice that I didn't heal. And I was like, well, what the heck? Right. And, and so I knew, I mean, that's the easiest thing you all can do is have one of your guildies, Lucian, you take a screenshot at turn one. So you, after the first Lucian goes and see what your team is doing. And, and, and ultimately, if you can answer Lucian really well, you can answer half the AO meta. Because right now, if the last three legends in a row were strong Lucian players, they weren't Tiana players. Okay, um, and, and that's because you see a resurgence of Rena and Camilla, 
and the Lucian players love it. They just feed all over it. It doesn't matter how tanky those 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 bitches are, <laughs> right? Like you, you just you just you're just like getting melted by Lucian. But Tiana struggles more against those players, um, and Zeros you just struggle more against like the tanky Camilla and Renans. Uh, so, anyways. Cool. All right. So um, to kind of finalize the arena meta talk, what we wanted to go ahead and do for the community is kind of put it all together and use my account um, as an example or whatnot. So Safi just took a little quick look uh, before we made this video. And, you know, judging by his three different teams, we're going to see if I fit into one of those teams. And if I do or if I don't, what is the reason why? So we can kind of put it all together. So what was your thoughts on what you initially looked at and, and what were you so, thinking? So when I'm scanning through your account, what I see is Vanessa, okay, which is uh, must be nice to have a Vanessa. Yeah, but as, I, as, as Jackie <laughs> would say. Yeah, but I, so this this unit is, I mean, this is like S tier defense unit, right? So I, I naturally navigate to that. I also naturally navigate to um, Jameer potentially, okay. Um, now Jameer is not used too much on defense, but right, I'll explain right. why if you didn't have Vanessa here in a minute, why I would why I would think about Jameer. So first is Vanessa gives you two options. Um, it's Vanessa is not a great speed team meta unit because she doesn't really add much value to a speed team other than the the leader skill. Um, there's probably better options uh, for. She she really shines more in mid range comps because she she's a toolkit right. I mean she gives yeah. you a huge speed lead. She defense breaks and she reses. That's exactly what I mean about what is a good mid range unit. You're consolidating three different roles into one unit, and a mid range team has to do that. Okay. The other option is bruiser tank. Um, the reason why is because speed is functional health on your units. It's you're taking more turns. You have a chance to drop debuffs. Chance to violent proc. Um, you, it, it, it buffs your ability to nemesis heal, reduces the ruining requirements on, on your nemesis healers. So it's very powerful, um, to also use her in a tanky meta. Um, so I think you have two, you have two options. Okay. I see that you also have Orion, although I don't know if I really like your runes on Orion. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. You can call it. And, and so that's the good thing about this. Uh, put it all together. You can call out exactly why or why not you like something or not. So you can kind of explain to people because they, they, they love hearing you elaborate on a variety of things. Obviously, I don't want you to, you know, go into a two-hour segment. You know, I, I know you got, you know, a lot of things to do. You're you, don't, you don't want me to talk about how ghetto your Orion is for two hours? <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Hit, hit it up. Hit it up. This ghetto Orion. Okay, so what I don't like about Orion, so you might, maybe if you're using it in Guild Wars, it's yes. strong to build Orion violent. Okay. Right. However, if you wanted to have arena use, um, you need to build it will. Uh, I mean, whoa, whoa. Swift, whoa. Swift, 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 Swift. Swift. Calm Swift, down Swift, there, bro. Swift. Bro, bro, <laughs> calm Swift. down there. So you need you need to be Swift. And, and ultimately, if you want to, Orion is like the rock star mid-range comp. It's all over the Asia meta. It's all over the global meta. Orion's a powerhouse because the RNG factor of its dispel um, allows you to like potentially stun their Tiana, potentially stun their Xeros, potentially stun their Lucian, potentially stun their Seek, right? It, it, it's, and, and that's if hopefully you can outspeed. But with Vanessa and Orion, um, with a really good swift Orion and, and a lot of like high base speed, uh, I mean a lot of like uh, speed enchants and grindstones and whatever, um, he can be really scary. Um, the problem, you know, I think what you need to make sure is when you're building a Vanessa Orion comp is – with with Orion and Vanessa alone, you need to have to gauge buff, and then you need your other units to take immediate turns afterwards. So what, what I see happen when people use Orion comps is their Orion will gauge buff, and then I just get to go anyways. Right, big because, guns, big guns. Right, which is totally defeats the purpose of having Orion on your team. So you need to make sure that your team is fast enough. Like, um, And I think Orion's best friend, one of its best friends, is Veramos, actually. Um, and, and the reason why is, is you can, you can take turn one, potentially Veramos can stun, and then they're already to a bad start. Okay. Um, the, the other, the other thing that could happen is, um, maybe you just dispel, if you dispel their water pirate and they still have all their other units, um, and, and then your Veramos AOE stuns. Okay. And then it stops their galleon and then they're not going to, most likely they're not going to beat you. So, 
I, I, I like the pairing, and Veramos is really a mid-range rock star as well. His best build is Violent Nemesis. He really shines if he can survive a Lucian Blast, the slot to speed Lucian Blast, because then he can Violet Brock um, AoE stun um, and stop the in incoming Doom. Um, and you could, you know, kind of pair him up with another healer. So I think a, a fairly common comp that you will see is like, you know, Vanessa, Praha, Orion, Veramos. Um, for you, for you specifically, I mean, I would, I would like to see you, I mean, if you were to play around with Vanessa, Orion, Veramos, um, and then I think you would have to play test with that, with that fourth slot, um, to find out maybe a win condition, um, or maybe some, some healing. I don't know. Maybe you go slot two speed Chandra. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> and, and go man. like HP, HP, right? The problem with your Chandra build now is that you, you, you won't take a turn with Orion Gage, it, there'll be you, they'll be able to easily interrupt you. Right. Now, I, I kind of joke about Chandra, but I mean, there's, you know, I think that third slot you'll have to experiment with. I think what you're using now is Theo Mars, but Theo Mars is not taking advantage of of it. it just doesn't do enough. It's a single target nuker. It's not a toolkit unit. It doesn't have any utility outside of that. Um, you know, if you didn't have Vanessa, I would probably experiment in a mid range cop with with Jameer. Um, okay, so. So that's like your mid-range alternative. Now, you know, I'm not seeing the third AOE unit to really fit in your mid-range, so maybe we go tanky, okay? So mm -hmm. I think you, you would still maintain your Vanessa leader. You would drop the Orion. Um, Vanessa Chassoon are buddies. They're, they're, mm -hmm. they're fantastic friends. Um, and, and, you know, scrolling through your units, I think Darian is still pretty relevant. Um, if you have a, a dispeller, I don't see any dispellers. Do you have any? Or I mean, cleansers. Do you yeah, have any cleansers? The no. only one was uh, Veramos. And then, like, you talk about AoE, like a, a like defensive. Oh, defensive cleanse? No, no, no. Yeah. So I was, I'm trying to build like all the comps for you, right? So you have mid range, which would, would be kind of what you're using today. It's the Vanessa Orion Veramos X. And then you have a defense, uh, if you want to go tanky, would be. Um, probably Vanessa, I would still maintain, but also you would maybe throw in a Darian. Um, maybe if you built like a tanky Leica or something. Oh, hmm, maybe, maybe, maybe that's something you can do. I know everyone builds him damage, but um, maybe he can be a win condition if you build him really tanky. Because how would Lucian's deal with that? That would suck. Right. Um, um, but then you would probably need some sort of answers there. So maybe you go Vanessa, Chassoon, uh, tanky Leica, and and Chandra. Or something like that, right? But I think what you would have to do is is really what what it comes down to is is tweaking the timing and tweaking how you build each unit, knowing that if you're exposing yourself, you're not running Chloe or immunity, you need to have some high resist units. Maybe you have a, a unit strategically on Will. Um, Darian, I think, is still very meta relevant in, in the Bruiser meta. Uh, Darian's really useful against people that try to bomb you. Um, it reduces a large amount of damage. It helps with Lucian survivability. Um, people kind of swayed away from it, uh, you know, a little bit. Um, but it wasn't too long ago, Mav Nasty got Legend. He used Diaz on defense. And, yep. and it wasn't that it was Diaz, right, that he used per se. It was that passive reduction that he used. Um, that 15% damage reduction. So, um, you know, whether he used Darian or, or Diaz, it would have done the same thing. And if you had, do you have a Diaz? I do. I just haven't summoned it because I'm a, I'm a fail. <laughs> I just, I don't, I didn't have any use for it at the time. Damn, what are you farming this HOH for? Dude, uh, I had Brian. I had to max out Brian. so. Damn, still you? Okay. All right. All okay, right. I got that Brian. Oh, okay. Okay. You don't need to reset cooldowns because you have Jameer, right? That's yeah, why, yeah. Yeah. That's why, <laughs> that's why you didn't have the skill up. So, um, so anyways, but it, okay, well, I mean, Diaz is, I mean, that's another unit you could use uh, on, a, on, a tanky, on a tanky defense. Ultimately, your goal with the tanky defense is you want to have, you want to survive enough blasts, but then, um, you, you know, <laughs> one of the win conditions could really just be the tower damage, assuming how far you progress in your glory points. If I'm talking to like, you know, a very seasoned G3 player, it's something to think about. Is it, uh, you know allowing your tower damage to kind of just sweep them because a lot of like Yolo AO teams won't run any healing. So they if if they really struggle at all killing one of your units, the towers are, are a real thing, man. I, I don't know how many times my Xeros has died to a stupid tower because it got stalled <laughs> yeah. out. It was so aggravating. So, um, but I think you know Diaz, Darian, Diaz, Darian, Vanessa, Chessoon. Chessoon is the second best healer in arena. Um, and in 
and you know, especially if you don't have like a Praha. Do you have Juno? I thought you had Juno. No, no, my wife did. You, you see, oh. you see me on my wife's account probably saw Juno. Yep. So yeah. Okay. But yeah, no, I appreciate the insight. And again, guys, um, uh, hopefully you were able to kind of you know listen to the thought process and see how you would you know work your way into this you know with regards to his list of whatnot. So I appreciate that insight. Um, I think we'll have to. Uh, definitely close out the video here with a with a great question here. Um, we we talked a little bit about the destroy runes, but to to kind of broaden your horizon on there, since you've seen so many things in this game, uh, you know the ups and downs and left and rights about it. Uh, if there was one thing to change, uh, and we've already talked about this destroy runes uh, with regards to the AD and talking about the meta, if there's one thing to change, um, what would it be and why? About AD or in general? A, yeah, AD AO arena in in general. Yeah. Oh, okay. So if if Bomber listens to this video, he's <laughs> so pissed off. Here it comes. I'm gonna make him, I'm gonna make him rage. I want to see ignore defense abilities removed from the game. Ooh. <laughs> okay, oh, let man. that settle in. Ah, let that settle in. That's, that's hurting me a little bit. Come on, that's the only reason why I can get my little G1 <laughs> if I spam 300 crystals. <laughs> <laughs> the mad Lucian guy. I can't win without my Lucians. Come on, I suck. Fuck your Lucians. Yeah. Fuck your Lucians. That's it. That's Fuck it. Your... No, okay. So for, I mean, you know, for those of you that are listening with your kids, you know, <laughs> apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to new dad. Shout um, out to new dads one time, one time. <laughs> so for me, okay, here's the deal. Anything we do to change the meta now and skill balancing, we've seen it before. All right. If we, if we scale back the, the really tanky comps, we allow kind of mid range to flourish again, um, like it did three months ago. Um, and and the reason why bruiser comps are 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 the top comp right now is because of grindstones and raiding. Right? Again, we talked about how disproportionately defense has gotten a buff from the. You can stack a lot more HP and defense than AO players can stack attack and crit damage right now. That's just how things are panning out. So. Um, and units have um, higher, can take advantage more of the defensive stats than they can of their their attack power stats. Okay, so knowing that, um, I think it would be interesting to see a world where we can rune with defense, um, where we can use multiple elements on defense versus um, kind of being overly cautious about wind attackers like you know Lucian, obviously ignoring defense. Um, I just feel like. There's a world we haven't seen yet and a world that we're not ready to understand yet um, because, because we've hung on to our Lucians for so long. I, I want to see that unit leave, force us to create um, more AO alternatives. And the beauty of Galleon and why I want Galleon to stay longer is because look at the, the freaking AOE diversity you can bring, the attacker diversity. I mean... Nobody was using bombs without. I mean, I mean, I'm sorry, not Galleon. Tiana and Galleon, okay, kind right. of paired up. Paired you know, up. It allows the bombing strategy. It allows you to bring you know, like Teshar is like super relevant. Um, it never, never really was before. Poseidon is is really cool and strong. I mean, Julie is really strong. Julie, I mean, you, holy you, cow. Right? you can you can use all of these units um, because Galleon allows that super efficiency on AO, where you can bring two AOE nukers. Um, by having a you know AOE defense break and attack power buff, which is something that like the de AOE defense break alternatives do not have, um, and it allows you to you know to to ruin those attacker slot two speed because you get the attack power buff and AOE defense break. So I just really love seeing the different AOs people can can marry up or think of with Galleon. And I know it's it, we're talking about Galleon and kind of the redundancy of Galleon. Um, I'm okay with it because Galleon's paired up with a lot of new alternatives. It's kind of exciting. The um, but it's too hard for defense right now to have to answer the different Galleon combinations and then also have to answer ignore defense. Because one a strong counter to AoE defense break is first to either stack resistance, if you think you're lo losing to Tiana Galleon comps, or second is to st um, stack defense on your units. Um, it helps with the defense break if you're able to have like two defense runes, but then you're going to get murdered by Lucian. So sure. I would just like to see ignore defense removed from the game um, to allow us to utilize our stats completely. And I would like to see in, in, in so in kind of hats off to bomber the way I think we would also have to do it then is to nerf these super tank units like the Camilla's Rena's and all these units that have taken advantage of a lot of the, the raid potential 
um, so that you, okay, so you've lowered, you know, kind of the wall defense to a more manageable wall, and then you remove the high power Lucian, ignore defense, ignore a stat in the game, and, and then let's see what happens. It would be right. exciting to see all the different combinations that people can think of. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to something like that. And and if Conquest is listen, if at the very least if they can't remove it, at least reduce like make it a percentage chance to ignore, so it's not like a guaranteed like <laughs> twenty one mm-hmm. to twenty five k or something like that, something crazy. But also, again, remember to Childish's plea. Also, nerf these super walls on defense if if we go there. So that we don't have five minute AO matches. Okay, so they have to be married. It's nerfing, ignore defense abilities, and it's also nerfing super wall units. Um, and and that I think will be an interesting meta that we haven't seen before. Cool, really cool. Thank you so much for the insight again. Um, I guess I, I, before we kind of close out the video, is there anything else you want to add? A last minute word with regards to anything that we've talked about? Uh, you know, no. You guys, you guys could, you know. I participate in uh, OMG Bombers stream like nearly daily. So every day after work, I'll call in and talk to those guys. That's an easy way to get a hold of me if, if you have any questions. Um, also, Mad Pugs on, on Reddit. Uh, shout out to, you know, Swag, the new guild. Um, A1, Cletus, uh, Insane Lee, Fields, all these guys um, are just are, are really awesome. So, you know, hit, hit any of us up if you're if you're looking for a new G3 guild as well. Um, that's it, really. Thanks for having me. I'm glad to be back. Yeah, anytime. And, and with regards to hitting you guys up to to join your guild, what what would be the best way to get in touch with you or your guild recruiter, or whatever? Uh, if you just send me a message on right at Mad Pugs, then I can I can hook you up with the right person. Cool, cool. Sounds good. All right. And so uh, again, uh, for anybody that has uh, checked out the previous video, if you haven't already, make sure to go ahead and tune into that episode 3 of Educate and Dominate featuring Scafita so you can get the uh, initial video. In addition, uh, he does stream every now and again, so I have the link up for you on the top right there, so make sure to go ahead and check him out on Twitch when he does stream. Um, other than that, I think that's uh, pretty much it. Again, thank you so much again for the opportunity. This this is one of the videos that I'm going to go ahead and uh, <laughs> watch them both at the time so I can think up on this stuff. Uh, Lord, Lord knows uh, we could go for two more hours, uh, guys, but as you guys know, I apparently need to ruin. I need to. I need to start farming Diaz because I don't have enough skills. <laughs> I don't have enough skills, so we need to cut off the video right there. But again, uh, your your information is second to I appreciate everything, man. As always. Thanks for having me. All right, thank see you guys all for tuning in. It's your boy Childish and Scott Fetus for Childish Plays. Checking out. Take care, and we will see you next time, guys. We're out. <laughs>